you can tell it's getting a little bit chillier. What are they doing there? What's up everyone? Welcome to Mike's YouTube channel. My name is Bridget, and Mike's on the back, and we are going for a Thursday cruise. Oh, Bravo's on the back. My name is Bridget, and I can kick, stretch, and kick. Which way am I going? And today we are talking about the guy I work with, his name is Ed. He is an older dude. And today we were serving pears for lunch. And every single pear had a sticker on it. You know, when you buy it from the grocery store, it's got a sticker on it. And he was telling every single kid. <laughs> he was telling every kid, eat it, it's edible. <laughs> I said, Ed, I usually peel them off. I'm not peeling all them off. So he was telling the kids they were leaving it on their trays. Well, you, you didn't eat your sticker. Your sticker's edible. Eat your sticker. So I kept on telling him, don't stop saying that to kids. It's not edible. And he looked it up, and it sure is fucking edible. <laughs> So I was taking it and I was stretching it. Like, if it's edible, it should just boop, flake, you know? No, this thing was stretching to two inches long like a piece of plastic. I was like, well, what's the difference? The cheese we get here is like plastic. It's like, that's a good point. But yeah. Let's do the real topic. What? Mystery serial killer. Can they hear you? Maybe a little bit in your helmet, but I gotta do something like that. Oh, all right. So you want to talk about that? I don't know if people even want to listen to that. So let's see. I was about. So Mike wants me to talk about a f my family history, about my uncle and his best friend at the time, which was also my mother's boyfriend at a previous time. My parents growing up, they would fight. They would break up for a few months. My mom would move out. She'd get an apartment, we'd go live with family members. You know, it happened quite often. Not quite often, but often. And uh, and between one of those breakups, my mom had a boyfriend, which was my uncle's friend as well. His name's Gary Evans, and he is a serial killer. At the time, nobody knew that he was doing any of this. Um, and as a kid growing up, my sisters and I, we actually did like him. He was really good to us. He would take us away for the weekends. He would take us shopping. He would buy us stuff. He loved my mother. He was actually pretty good to us. But um, him and... Yeah, I remember him showing up with bags of jewelry, letting us all pick out something out of the bag of nice, you know, nice jewelry. Um, but anyways, he was friends with my uncle, my uncle Timmy. Oh, my sister's calling me. Hold on. I'm not answering it, just hold on. Hello? Right? I'm on my, yeah, I'm on the bike. All right. 
Love you, bye. You there? I don't know how that picked up, but... I said I'm not gonna... Did I say answer it? Oh. Okay, anyways. Anyways, that was my older sister calling. She loves to call and check up on me. Oh. Um. So anyways... Gary Evans was my uncle's, one of my uncle's best friends. And um, one day my uncle, he was married. He had a kid at the time. I think my cousin was like eight or nine years old. And he used to work with my father. My father and him were really good friends too but my uncle used to work with my father and one day my uncle just never came home never showed up never came home never called his wife kid family nothing and it wasn't like my uncle my uncle was amazing he was kind gentle funny loving it was kind of like, um, he had a little bit of like my cousin. What was his name? Tim, my Uncle Timmy, I said that. Oh. Timothy Reisdorf was his name. Uh, so he never showed up. Nobody had a clue uh, what happened. Kind of a clue as time went on, kind of a clue. But, um,. Tried reaching out to Gary, and he was never not to be found either. So, kind of put two and two together. That, and you know, Gary had a, a past of crimes. He did time with Son of Sam. Uh, had a crime of had a criminal history. Rob, yeah, robbing. Is that what it is, Rob? Robbery? He would um, theft, rob antique stores. Uh, he would even rob cemeteries for the granite and the stones and museums. Yeah, he was. Uh... Yeah, I saw him early. Am I getting on the highway? <laughs> You're not really telling me where I'm going. And you're on my ponytail. Um, so there was a detective that knew Gary really well. And the detective was out looking for Gary since we couldn't find our uncle. And they found him. They got him and they were interrogating him and they were like, listen, uh, my cousin just wants his father to come home and his wife just wants to know that he's safe. Sorry, I wanted to get away from the middle of the road. I don't like that crack. So, uh... Gary kind of just came clean and... This was seven months after the fact that my uncle has been missing and no idea where he's been and whatnot. So Gary came clean and told the detective uh, what happened with my uncle. And what happened was my uncle wanted to get out of the, the, the bad life. He wanted to raise his son the proper way and not be involved in any robberies or you know any life like that you wanted to work hard and provide and that was that and Gary didn't like the fact of being alone and not having you know a buddy doing this shit with him so he killed my uncle Pretty much, when I he said that to him, he brought him to a storage facility here, 
put a gun to his head and killed him inside of a... I don't know if it was actually in the storage unit. I can't remember. But in the storage unit, he not only shot my uncle, but he cut him up to fit him into a barrel. So from the storage unit, he cut him up and put him in a barrel and then drove him from Colony to Brunswick, which is what, like 20 minutes? Drove him 20 minutes and uh, brought him up into a shallow area of the woods, like maybe 20 yards off of the road, and then buried his body in a shallow uh, grave. And um, so that's what happened to my uncle, but my uncle also had a friend years ago that was involved in this too in the 80s. Um, same type of story that didn't want to be doing this shit and Gary didn't like that and shot him and killed him but drove him all the way to Florida and buried him down in Florida. And for years, nobody knew where this guy went. They thought he just got abducted one day. He never just disappeared. No word from him, nothing. And it took... Well, that's what... I don't know who spread it, but I heard it as a kid, and... That's what I said. That nobody heard from him, and they thought it was... an alien abduct abduction. They didn't know where this guy just disappeared. No word, no phone call, no nothing. I don't think he had kids, but um, he definitely was with somebody or married, and nobody heard from him. And... Gary didn't tell that story until he got caught and told the story about my uncle. He just came clean about everything. And that was about, this happened in the early 80s and my uncle passed away in the late 90s. I think I was about 13 years old when this happened and it was every single day for seven months. It was at least, no, more than that, maybe a year. Every day, every single day it was in the newspaper and I remember coming home and cutting the article out of the newspaper and um, it was it was tough being that age and all you know, your friends, parents know about what's going on in your family and you know, you're not allowed to go over and hang out with certain people because they think their whole family has got something to do with this and it was just all around tough at that age. The news was at my house every day trying to interview with my mother. Uh, there's a book that actually came out about the whole story. So if anybody wants to pick up the book and read the book, uh, it's called Every Move You Make. And it's got a picture of Gary Evans right on the, the cover. My uncle's in it in the book. My mom's in it. I think if my father's in it, it mentions, mentions my sisters and I, but not our names. But, um... Yeah, my aunts were on, um, Montel Williams. I think that was the first one. Is this guy trying to get over or what? Montel Williams, and then, um... I killed my, I think it's I killed my best friend on like um, the history or A&E channel or something like that. There's a couple of shows that was out on because it is a pretty fucked up story, pretty horrendous story. And not to mention, like I said, my mother dated Gary Evans. So the feeling of this guy that, you know, I also enjoyed being around possibly could do this to my uncle who is amazing so it was just all around fucked up feelings but um oh 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 oh, oh. so anyway so gary got busted 
when he got, not busted, when they picked him up and the detective was talking to him, he did, oh, sorry, sorry. He, he, um, was waiting, you know, to be transported and he was in, I think he was in Res Rensselaer County waiting and, you know, Gary was, Well, he was being transported, and while he was being, he was being transported and not like a bus or anything, he was being transported in a, a van, like a minivan, and he was handcuffed, and he broke out of his handcuffs and kicked, he was shackled, but he kicked the window out of the van, jumped out of the moving van, on a bridge, the, what is it, the Menance Troy Bridge or the Green Eyed? No, yeah. Right now? All right, um, so he kicked the van window out and did a swan dive off of the bridge into a foot of shallow water and snapped his neck and died. But when he died, they found in his jail cell a letter that he drew, a picture that he drew. And in the picture, it was a picture, and this is in the book, you'll see the picture that he actually drew. I'll put it up on screen. But um, he drew a picture of himself flying in the air, like doing a swan dive, flying through the air, and they have um, pictures of his autopsy, and he got a hold of a handcuff key, and that's how he was able to escape. He put it up into his nose, into, what is a, yeah, and that's how he was able, ooh, bump. And that's how he was able to uncuff himself and kick the window out and jump and all that shit. And that was the house where that guy got mauled by those dogs like a week ago in the backyard and died. Yeah, cops, uh, it was right there by the car wash on the right. There was like eight pit bulls in the backyard and some guy um, jumped over the fence and the pit bulls just fucking mauled him. And somebody, oh, I gotta get over some, I'm sorry. Somebody videotaped it and you can see the guy kind of trying to struggle for his life and a cop came and shot one of the dogs but the dogs didn't even flinch, they just kept doing it. So anyway, Gary Evans, uh, he did not want to serve his life in prison. He want, that was his plan. He was not going to spend the rest of his life behind bars. And that's, oh yeah, oh, he was really smart. He was a really smart guy. He used to bring us, I remember being like, seven, eight years old and he would bring us up to the quarry and he would tell us, you're all going to go up and jump off that that cliff, cliff dive, you know, cliff jumping for fun. And we all did. We all did. We would go to the quarry. It was blue water and we go cliff jumping. He'd take us uh, to, and you know what's funny is that these houses, we had no idea what they were as kids. We just thought he was like renting these houses at, when we were kids. But what he was doing was actually breaking into these homes. Fuck. Come on, buddy. Go, 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 go. He was breaking into these homes. And while people were on vacation and he would know that nobody was gonna be there and we would spend the weekends in these house. My mother had no idea, we had no idea. We just thought, you know, 
they were homes that he was renting for a little bit. And, um, yeah, he was a, like I said, he was always kind to my mother and my sisters and I, and he was fun. He would take us to, like, parking lots in the winter, and he would do donuts, and, and I remember seeing him months before my uncle showed up missing. He came up to the trailer park, but, uh, oh. Not trying to get into that story, but yeah, I saw him then too. Are we going to this building up here or no? But anyways, I mean, if you guys... So do you think they... No, all of the people Gary Emmett's killed, or do you think there were other people that Um, what do I honestly think? I don't know. That's a tough, tough question. I think, I think he was honest. I think he was honest. I don't think he wanted to live with any guilt. I think it was three, if I'm remembering. Which makes him a serial killer. Yeah. I think it was a total of three people. And he wasn't a tall guy. I think he was like 5'5". Five, five. But he worked out. From his time in prison, right? He was jacked. I just remember him being jacked. He had crystal blue eyes that I remember. Um, Didn't he uh, have some best woman? Too? Yeah, I guess he had a... A thing of dressing up as a woman. Uh, my father wanted to beat his ass one time. I remember that. And I'm kind of glad nothing happened to my father. Yeah. But, um, you know, Gary made it very clear he would never hurt a woman or any child. He had a. And I think the main reason why he. <laughs> What the fuck is going on here? Go, bud. Humanity first. Humanity first. Hmm. We're gonna park behind this white car. Oh, look at me. Look at me. What's this going? There you go. There you go. Howdy. Howdy. Look at. Three. Three. No, here. No, here. Three. Three. Two. Three. One. One. All right. Do we want to go down or do we want to cut over? You want to hear the rest of your story? Okay. Uh, I don't know where I left off or what else I have to tell, but... Um, well, all right. So, anyways, my... Seven months, eight months later, we find out what happened to my uncle. And, um, my aunt. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> He's like, she can barely touch the ground. What the fuck is she driving you for? Um, is that the, the oh it is the post guy alright this guy's taking a left and he can't be taking a left so who took a swan dive ended his life deleted himself didn't want to live in prison yeah but I highly, highly recommend getting the book and reading it and looking through. You'll see pictures of my uncle. And my uncle's holding a huge, huge rifle. But my uncle was the most gentle soul you'd ever meet. It was just like a picture with somebody who had a weapon and he just took like a... a, a badass photo with it. That was about it. My my uncle wouldn't hurt anybody. Nobody. My uncle loved to play 
the drums. He was amazing at playing the drums. He had a motorcycle. He loved to ride. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. Um. Oh, yeah. Yep. Harley. Harley's. Um. So, anyways. You can just wrap it up and say, yo, thanks for watching. And that's my story. Murder mystery. If, uh... So, anyways. Uh, when it all happened, my aunt. My uncle's wife blamed my mother. Huh. Um, blamed my mother because my mother dated Gary and my uncle was my mom's like best friend. They got along great. So my aunt kind of blamed my mother and then I isolated my cousin from us for years. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's it. I guess. I mean, like I said, you want to know more? He would go into cemeteries and take uh, tombstones and benches and shit and go through the tops of antique stores and jewelry stores and run them through the, like, the vents and shit. But, uh... Oh, God damn. But, yeah, that's all I can think of right now. I don't know. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> do like a closing, like an outro. <laughs> thanks for watching. Okay. So, thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for listening. And... Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And Mike will let me know what they are, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Like this video. Subscribe. <laughs> I don't know what else. What else? Ride United, ride free. Ride United and ride free. Two wheels down, shiny side up. Bridgie out. Look at that building. Which one? The one right in front of us. Oh, yeah. Right? Sun heading in. And, yeah. You know, what a great way to end that video. Is the video done? I feel like there was something else we were supposed to be talking about. Do you remember coming down here to party? <laughs> Do you remember what that club was called? Uh, I feel like it started with a J, like Jiminy or... Jillian? No, not Jillian's. No. It was like, are you going to... Jiminy... I want to say Jiminy Peak. You going to Jiminy Peaks? Oh, no, that was down there. Okay, the name I'm thinking of was... No. <laughs> Jimmy Joe's. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know about all that. That was... That was a lot to remember, and... Well, I didn't see that, but I wish I did, because that does piss me off. Like, dude, what are you so sour about? Because there's not a... This is not a bitch on the back of yours? Right? Because you're not relaxing and sitting on the back of your bike. Oh. He was just jealous. Jealous he didn't have a dude on the back. Look at him, I'm a one-handed. He's probably jealous of that too. Oh no, he flipped us off with one hand. Never mind.
They can do one-handed. Ready? Now hold on, because I'm going to do a mile-long wheelie. Hang on! I'm doing a wheelie! Are we going to... Uh, should I even go this way? Are we going to get stuck in... Uh, what time is it? We're going to get stuck in that throughway shit. Oh, God. What's option two? Oh, my God. Is this 787 or... Th what would you... Uh, oh, my God. What the... F 